Welcome to the I Will Mindset Podcast. I am Chris Elmore, your host, and this is episode number four. Today, I want to talk about accountability. I will be accountable. And specifically, I want to talk about accountability in regards to your goals. We all need to take accountability for our actions and the impact it has on the pursuit of our goals. We all have dreams, aspirations, and goals. And the whole concept of the I will mindset is being unwavering in your pursuit of your goals. And we fail. We get delayed, derailed, sidetracked on our journey to achieving our goals. And part of getting back on track and staying on track is learning what delayed us or derailed us and taking accountability when it was something we did ourselves, right? There are external factors. There are things that happen. More often than not, it's our own actions or lack thereof that contribute to these delays. Accountability, it's a powerful concept that demands introspection and responsibility. You have to be willing to go back, go inside, and really look at what did I do wrong? Why did I jump on the scale this week and it didn't go down, it went up? Why did I not hit the time that I wanted to hit in my run? It's always very easy to blame external factors. True progress, growth, it requires examination of our actions. And if it is our fault, we hold ourselves accountable for it, right? We procrastinate, we make poor decisions or neglect the steps necessary. And ultimately, it delays our progress. Let's take an example. Think about this. Imagine you set a goal to enhance your professional skills, right? You want to move forward in your career. You are looking at taking an online course, getting some sort of certificate. Maybe it's an advanced degree, but let's just say it's an online course. So there's one class you're trying to finish. And with that, what's going to happen? It's going to give you the opportunity to maybe take on different projects, maybe a raise, uh, whatever it may be. But as the deadline approaches, you find yourself sitting there aimlessly, mindlessly scrolling through social media, binge watching the latest Netflix series, or maybe spending too many evenings out with friends in the bars, whatever, but you weren't studying, you weren't doing the schoolwork, you ultimately, you didn't get it done. So what, what are the consequences of that? Every choice that you made along the way, every choice has a consequence. In this case, you possibly delayed your career growth. Maybe you missed a raise. Maybe someone else got the job that you wanted. None of this had anything to do with external forces. These were your own actions, your own inactions. So to overcome these obstacles, these distractions, we've got to start to cultivate this culture of holding ourselves accountable. We need to be accountable for the decisions we make, and we need to hold ourselves to that. We need to acknowledge the choices we made, whether they're good or whether they're bad, and then acknowledge the consequences. You got to reflect on the moments when you veered off course and make a commitment to steer yourself back in the right direction more quickly in the future. It's like meditation. Over the last five years, I've taken to meditating. I work with Jess from Yogi at Triathlete, and she has been kind of my mentor uh, learning to meditate. And when you meditate, you sit there still, typically on the ground, maybe your legs are folded, maybe you're on a pillow, but you sit there with your eyes closed. And in the beginning, you really focus on your breathing. You're breathing in, you're breathing out. You're breathing in, 
you're breathing out. And your goal is to focus on your breath. Say 10 minutes. Let's focus on our breath for 10 minutes. Well, 45 seconds into that, you realize you're thinking about what you're going to have for lunch or what you got to get done with your kids later today. And you've completely didn't even realize you're no longer thinking about the breaths that you're taking. Well, what you do in that case in meditation is you acknowledge that, right? You don't stop meditating. You don't open your eyes. You don't quit. You acknowledge it and you gently, they always say gently, gently bring yourself back to focusing on your breath. I look at reflecting and looking at those moments, analyzing them, what took you off course as like gently bringing yourself back on the path. Being accountable isn't about assigning blame to yourself, but rather taking control of the decisions you made. It empowers us to learn from our mistakes, grow from our experiences, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll make better choices next time around. When we hold ourselves accountable, we become creators of our future rather than victims of the circumstances. Jess from Yogi Triathlete always talks about being stronger than your environment. And let's take me for an example. I used to blame my wife all the time for buying what was on sale in the uh, sweets department. There was always a new box of cookies or cupcakes and chips and all kinds of stuff would show up in the house on a weekly basis, tempting me to stray from my diet. And it was her fault. She kept buying this stuff. She kept bringing it in here. And that's why I was making bad choices. Well, she wasn't doing anything to me. She wasn't buying those for me. And she didn't stick it in my mouth. She didn't make the decision to go into the pantry and binge eat the entire bag of chips or package of cookies. No, it was me. I made the bad choice. She wasn't to blame. I need to hold myself accountable for that and stop deflecting that to others, some external thing. So it wasn't her fault at all. It, it's me. I need to hold myself accountable. I'll leave you with this. If you can take away one thing from this whole little talk, being accountable doesn't mean perfection. You're not ever going to be perfect in any pursuit. We're all going to make choices. It doesn't mean never making a poor choice. We are all fallible. We will all stumble and encounter setbacks. However, it's in the process, the process of holding ourselves accountable for the setbacks. That's where we're going to find the resilience. So let accountability serve as a guiding light. It's a compass that points us back to the path we veered off of. We lost the trail. We are now off the path, but we have a compass. Let accountability be your compass to get you back on the trail. It's a mirror, right? It's reflecting our actions. Accountability reflects our actions. It lets us see it. And ultimately, it should be a catalyst for positive change. So as I did last episode, I'll leave you with a quote. Accountability separates the wishers in life from the action takers that care enough about their future to account for their daily actions. John D. LeMay. We stood in the moonlight, it's something sweet. Let it wash over all of me. With you I fall my company. Forever close to the unknown. There's no doubts and no regret. Happy for we get another day to do it all.
in the sun You don't know what you got till it's gone Why?